What exactly is Atmos doing? How can we really tell other than what we hear? But a lot of times people will crank up a movie or music and they'll be listening to it and they'll think, I just don't really know exactly what I'm hearing and where it's supposed to be coming from. It, it can be a little confusing. And I think a lot of times, uh, sometimes when people claim that they're underwhelmed by Atmos, um, I think, well, I think a big part of it is uh, their setup that, you know, it's just a lot of factors. It, it is complicated to build a well-functioning Atmos theater. Uh, I absolutely acknowledge that. It is interesting to dive in and find out exactly what Atmos is doing. Now, how do we do that? Well, if you watched one of my previous videos, you'll know that I was recently loaned the Trinov Altitude 16 processor, which thank you, Trinov. This has been so much fun. I am just enjoying the heck out of this experience of having a Trinov processor in my 9.2.4 Dolby Atmos theater. And one of the features that the Altitude 16 has is that it has an Atmos renderer or viewer. And so it shows a visual representation of your room with your speakers. You can turn the speakers off and on as far as like whether you want to see them or not. And then it also shows the objects. It shows the sounds and where they're located and if they're moving around. And this is really, really interesting because I've watched some demo clips and listened to some music that I am very familiar with. And so I know how it sounds to my ears, but now I'm able to look and see what Atmos is actually doing, where the sounds are actually located. And I have discovered some very interesting things. First, I'm gonna start with a song called Think Fast by Dominic Fike and Weezer. I think the person or people who mixed this song in Atmos, I think they, uh, I, I don't know if they have a sense of humor or, or what, but it's really, really interesting to see what they did here. The objects around the room are static, meaning the sounds are coming from all of these locations, but interspersed throughout the song, I, I wish I could play it so that then you would know what I'm talking about, but obviously copyright strike, I can't play the music because YouTube does not like that. So I'll just, I'll just explain what's happening here and show you a video of, of the renderer, so you know what I'm talking about. So you have the static objects that are producing sound, and so you're listening to that, but then interspersed throughout the song are these elements of the music. Uh, it's Sometimes it's instruments, and sometimes it's uh, backup vocals. And they start at the room, and then they travel along the side, and then to the back of the room, and then back along the side to the front of the room, and then sometimes they there'll be multiple elements and one will be moving to the back while the other is moving to the front and it's all on the bed layer. So there's not really much happening in the heights, but it's just traveling around the room. And as I'm listening to it in my theater with my ears, I can hear those elements, but it's not super discernible that they're actually traveling around the room. And so what I did was, is I got up and I, I put my ear in each of the speakers and I could then hear, oh yeah, okay, it's moving from this speaker to this speaker. Um, but in the main listening position, the way it translates to my hearing is that as the sound moves from the front to the back and back to the front, et cetera, it just becomes this kind of bubble of sound. It's just, it just envelops me, the listener, in, in the sound and it kind of uh, creates kind of this airy effect and it's really cool. It's really, really cool. So I really like that song in Atmos, um, but now to have the visual representation, the renderer show what's actually happening, it's, it's really, really cool. Now there's something else that I uh, discovered with a different song. At first glance, this song appeared to be very boring because all of the objects are just static, meaning they're just placed around the room and then they just stay there. So there wasn't a lot of movement. Now the song sounds great because you're surrounded by music and, and voices all around you. The, the voice, you know, or the elements just aren't traveling around the room. They're just static. But 
I discovered something very interesting as I was listening to this song. Trinov has developed a 3D mapping technology. And, and what this does is it allows sounds to be placed in a location even if there isn't a speaker in that location. And what the way they do it is they use multiple speakers all producing sound and the way they produce it and the delays and I don't know what their magic sauce is, but by using the sounds from a combination of speakers, they then place the object in a place where there is no speaker or they want to accentuate the sound coming from that location. This is what I discovered with this particular song. The vocals were coming through very clear, very strong. It was very, very, very obvious that the emphasis was being placed on the lead vocals. And they were coming in from the front soundstage, super clear, like just solid from that location. But what I discovered is that the vocals weren't just coming from the, the mains, the left and right mains. Those same vocals were also being played in the wides and in the front heights. So six speakers total, but through this 3D mapping algorithm, technology, magic sauce, whatever, the sound was only, my, my ears perceived the sound as only coming from the front soundstage. I didn't hear the vocals coming from the wides or from the front heights, but those speakers were producing the vocals. I hope this makes sense because it it was quite remarkable when I discovered this. I I, I pulled my daughter in. I'm like, you, you've got to come listen to this. So I sat her down and I said, listen to this song and and then tell me where you're hearing the vocals from. And she listened for a minute or two and she's like, oh, the vocals are coming from the front. I'm like, okay, now get up and walk around and put your ear in each of these speakers. And I just saw her eyes just go like this. Whoa, like what? I had, like I didn't realize that those speakers were producing the vocals because it, it sounded like they were just coming from the front. And what this highlights is the ability of this Trinov processor to place objects around the room where there are no speakers. Through, through imaging multiple speakers, they're able to place objects anywhere. Now, now I recognize that other, other processors are able to do this as well, but just, to see the way the Trinob did it so clearly in this instance, it was just really kind of kind of shocking and, and very, very cool. The other thing that Trinob is able to do is they're able to send the bass from, say, your wides, uh, or, or rather from the heights to the wides, or from the wides to the sides. You can, you can set uh, the bass signals to not just be sent to the subwoofer, but also to other speakers, which helps localize those higher bass frequencies. So for instance, my wides, I have them set to where anything under 120 gets sent to my sides. And then from the sides, anything under 80 gets sent to the subs. And so that helps localize bass in the location where it's actually supposed to be. So another thing that I uh, listened to was a Dolby Atmos demo clip from a fellow YouTuber and, and subscriber to the channel. His name is Nick Matsky. I've talked about him uh, on previous videos. He mixed a Dolby Atmos demo clip very much in the tradition of those Dolby Atmos demo clips that Dolby used to make years ago, and they would put them on discs. I've also talked about, about that. Uh, and so he combined visuals with various audio elements to create a Dolby Atmos demo clip. And it is really, really cool. And now I'm able to watch the clip on my screen, but then I'm also able to watch it with the viewer through the Trinov interface to see where all of these different elements are. And it's so cool to see how they are just bouncing around. I mean, it, the, the objects are just going crazy. Like they are moving around all over the place. And it's, it's really, really cool. Uh, so Nick did a really, really good job of, of mixing that demo clip. If you haven't uh, checked that out, uh, I'll link to it in the description box. I'll link to his, um, 
his video where he talks about it and then he has a download. And if you're a Patreon of his, then you can download the full resolution, uncompressed version of it. Uh, but anyways, that is is a really, really cool thing. So now I'm excited to go and try out all the other Dolby Atmos demo clips that I have on on uh, on my Zidu that I've, I've loaded up on there and, and try those out and see where all the objects are placed. And so anyways, it's just really, really cool that Turnoff has given us this uh, this functionality where we can view where the objects are placed and not just hear them. And then we can also compare like, okay, it says it's coming from this location and then we can check and we can listen and like, oh, does it actually hear like it's coming from that location? So we can see, we can test how good the the audio is against how good our hearing is. And so, yeah, that's a good comparison. So anyways, tons of fun. I am looking forward to more demoing and more testing of this turnoff processor. And in the meantime, Thanks for watching.